Hey everyone, Chris Madsen here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to manage appearances in SolidWorks, meaning the color, the texture, etc., for plastic parts. Let's do it. All right, everyone, to get us started with managing the appearances of a product or a part, I have uh, made this simple button. Uh, this is not a button that uh, is related to anything specific. Um, I've just made a random button here as an example for you. I've yet to assign a material, which I'll do right now. I'm going to assign a PC ABS. This is a material I like to use. And it's a, a, a material that's quite common for <coughs> consumer products. I'm gonna turn off those planes. And frankly, I need to turn off this floor, this floor shadow because it's driving me nuts. Floor shadow, okay, there we go. Now, one of the things that's going on with PC ABS is that it's clear, and that's what we're seeing right now, a clear part. I'm gonna change this by going into the beach ball setting here on the far right side of the screen. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna go into the appearances tab. I'm gonna go into plastics. I'm going to apply a textured plastic to this. It's quite common for plastics to be textured, and a very common one is this MT11010 which is a mold tech standard. I'm dragging it over to the part, still holding down my left mouse button, letting go once I'm on top of it, and I have these options to apply it to just the face, to apply it to the entire revolve, or the entire body, or the entire part. I wanna apply it to the entire part in this case. So now I have a textured appearance on my uh, PC ABS material. Uh, now this is great. This is, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> we're just gonna call this our default part. Now we're going to imagine that we want to have both a red button and a green button. And let's just talk about how we, how we do that. So first of all, we need to um, recognize that in order to have these multiple configurations, we can control all those con configurations in a design table. So we're gonna enter, we're gonna create a design table and the design table is gonna allow us to access the parameters of this part. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna to go to insert and down to tables and then over to design table. I'm going to take all the defaults, auto create, allow model edits to update, except this bottom one here, which is enable cell drop down. That works, but it's, I usually don't like to do it. It doesn't give me as much, as much flexibility. So I turn that one off. Now what's happening is SolidWorks is creating a design table. It's asking me what parameter handles, parameter names it wants to have in the design table. I've chosen all of them and, and uh, selected OK. Now within SolidWorks, there is an embedded Excel file that has the default part in row three with the configuration, excuse me, the um, parameter names here in row two D1 at sketch one, D2 at sketch one. And then the numerical value is the number value, the numeric value of that parameter. So uh, what I can do in a design table, it's quite beautiful. We can create, um, okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry about that, I accidentally clicked out of that. So when that's the case, um, what you need to do here, I don't know why I can't see my, um, my, uh, design tree anymore. I don't know where that went. So, okay. I at least have this version of the design tree that's right over here, but this is, this is problematic. We need to figure out what's going on with this. Um, that's not what we want. Is this what we want? Oh, here we go. I didn't notice this little button off the side, which, um, is where I get that stuff. Okay. So I can put this back the way that it was, get back over to my design tree. I must have clicked on making a boundary surface or a boundary solid, which we're not gonna do. Okay, so that was a lame little distraction, but you know, my mode for these videos is to show you raw how it works and not have me necessarily work things out beforehand to see um, the most beautiful way of doing it. Instead, I wanna make sure that you see the um, actual way that it's done. 
So what have we done here? I'm trying to figure out where we are. We want to go in and edit our design table. Our design table is managed in our configurations. Here's our design table. Edit this table. We have virtually nothing going on in our table because I had accidentally closed it. Um, when we bring this back in, it does ask us if we want um, to have these other parameters brought in. I'm going to bring in color just to show you what happens on this. Um, Okay, open this up a little bit. What I was trying to do was move this, and I was very unsuccessful with that. Okay, that's what I was trying to do earlier. Um, okay, what I want to do now is create a new button. Button, okay, that's also not what I wanted. I'm going to double click in there. Button one, button one, okay. And then uh, here's button two showing up. I want these buttons to be identical to the default button. I need to copy those parameters in there. It means it'll have the same geometry, the same color, etc. Um, this will create me three uh, configurations, default button one and button two. So I'm going to click out of this. It's going to tell me that two new configurations have been created, button one and button two. That's great. That's exactly what I wanted. You can see button one is over here. Okay, if I double click on it, it will go open it. It's the same exact geometry. I can open up button two and it also is the same exact geometry. Now let's take button one and let's make it a red button. So when I activate this one and it's open, I can go into the beach ball and I can go over to um, this color. This is the MT11010 texture that we applied earlier. I can right click on it and as I right click on it, I can come in here and uh, change the values. Let's send this one to 255 on the RGB scale. And let's send this one to zero. And let's send this one to zero. That will get me a purely red button. Um, of course, there are many versions of red, but that is um, the one version of red that I'm going to choose for this. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to go over here and we want to recognize something really important. And that is that down here at the bottom, it says display states are linked. What this means is if I go in here and right click on display state four and look at properties, I can see that this link display states to configurations button has been clicked. This will mean that each of my configurations can have a different display state, i.e. like a different appearance or a different color. So let's see what button two is looking like. Yeah, button, button two is not red because we said that only button one is red. We can go now into button two and make this one green. So once that's highlighted, we can go into the beach ball. We can find the MT11010 is what we chose before. We can edit it. And now we can choose a green value for this and send red on the RGB scale down to zero, green on the RGB scale up to 255, which is the max number. And then we can uh, change this to zero for blue. And in fact, if we don't like that green, if that's just like way too much green, we can send this down to 200 and we get a different green. Or we can send this down to 100 and we get a darker green. Okay, so we're just going to go with that one just to show you how that can be done. And now in our configurations, we have button one, we have button two, and we have the default, which is the black. If we go in and we edit our design table, we can uh, see that the color has been changed. Okay, it's going to update. Okay, we're going to cancel that. We don't want to bring in part number. And we can see that the color for the different buttons is different. In the other chapters of the guidebook, you can read about how to calculate this number so that you can specify RGBs in the design table to get those colors. I won't spend any time to do that now, though. OK, so we have this button. We're going to save this button. And that's it. That's how you uh, take care of managing the appearances in SolidWorks for different configurations of the same part. That's all we're going to do in this video. But in the next video, I will assemble this into a small assembly and then show how the different configurations can be brought up after the generic assembly has already been made. OK, I wish you the best until then.